Hello all! Hey, watch this. Deep in the shadow, I know it's hard To put one foot in front of the other uh -huh. So far is the echo, where do we start? You can learn to discover Man, I wasn't quick enough on that button. Welcome in, Dell's Devotionals. Different spot, of course. We still have our internet issues. And um, I I didn't want to miss. So I made the trip here um, to make sure I was with y'all. Um, been a blessed day. I've had a great day. Um, a little different than I, what I thought it was going to be. But as several of you have said in the chat, my wife made sure that you all knew today is my birthday. Um, and contrary to the misinformation that my wife is sharing, I am not 50 years old. I'm not. Just so you know. It, it'll be like a few years before I'm there. I might feel like it, but I'm not there yet. <clears throat> so. I got to get a drink. And then I want to say hi to everybody that's in here. So, uh, hello to Elaine. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you, sister, for liking, sharing. I appreciate that. Guys, that helps out so much. I appreciate that. Uh, there's my brother, Joey, at Joe Fix It For You. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Teresa Drake, Teresa Jukowicz. Welcome in, welcome in. Thank you for being here. There's Tony and Joni at Creekside Maples. Um, got a little story I'll tell you of why I was a little bit crazy today. We'll get back to that here in just a second. There's my sister Evelyn Newman. What's going on? Hello. Thank you for being here. There's my brother James Hall. How you doing, James? Hey, there's our BFFs, Butler Family Farm, Jerry and Susan. And I bet that's probably Jerry. There's Bo at Guns and BBQ. What's going on, Brother Bowen? There's Val singing happy birthday to me. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here, Southwest Living with Val. There's my brother Piggy, Piggy's Piddles. Piggy, I've been running like nonstop. Thanks for being here, brother. There's Linda Peterson. Thank you for being here. Do appreciate it. The whole Leonard Mountain Homestead crew. Amy, Chris, Marissa, Grumpy, Moses, the Mexican Viking, everybody, everybody. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. There's my brother, Johnny, Gillum Farms. Thanks for being here. Let's see here. Everybody's saying hi to everybody. Melinda Dobson. Thanks for being here. Looks like I'm being invaded by Piggies Live. I appreciate that. Ginger, not for nothing. She got all confused on time zones and everything. Ginger, let me make it easy for you. Central time zone. It's central. It's central located. That's the correct time. I'm teasing. Thanks for being here, Ginger. There's. Eric and Tina at Rainy Ridge. What's going on? Good to see you. Let's see here. Who else have I missed? I know I've missed somebody. I know. Everybody's saying hi to everybody. Virginia Alexander. I don't remember if I said hi or not, but hello, Virginia. There's Nana Nine Acres. What's going on, Nana? Jamie's Country Living. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. And we understand if you're busy and not chatty, that's okay. We won't charge it to your heart. Let's see here. Who else we got? Thank you, all those happy birthdays. I appreciate it. See, Nana is actually telling the truth. I knew she couldn't get away with lying forever.
So let's see here. Karen Brest, welcome in. Hello, Karen. Let's see here, Nanny Tam. Hi. Homestead on the Hill. Tomorrow's your birthday. Well, happy early birthday to you. Said you'll be 65. Everybody wish wish them a happy birthday. Linda Peterson says, you're only five years old, Dale. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Maybe only mentally I'm only five years old. But Well, I hope everyone has been having a wonderful day, um, a blessed week. It has been a blessing of a day for me. Hey, there's Rebecca at Touched by Yarn. See, I told you I'm trying to catch up. There's Rebecca at Suburban Hillbilly. My two Rebeccas are right there side by side. Let's see here. There's my sister from Oklahoma, Christine, Mrs. Gillum Farms. Welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> Bowen says he wears two watches. One for Eastern Time and one for Central Time. You know, it says Eastern Standard Time. So it's the Standard Time or Central Standard Time. Only if you live there. James Hall says, I'm lurking. I'm just going to hide over here in my corner and wait. There's Mama Ray. Hello, Mama Ray. How are you doing? Let's see here. If I've missed you, if I scrolled over you, don't charge it to my heart. Just comment again. Because as soon as I get to the bottom of this, I keep up pretty good. For the most part. That's right, Linda. We're the better age group. Lila Newton. What's going on, Lila? Welcome in. Hey, guess what? I finally made it to the bottom. So I changed the title of this right before the live on the YouTube side. It, I don't know if it's coming across on this side. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if you agree with some of these statements, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. So, now that I've kind of got calmed down, I made it here with like 15 minutes before it was time to go live. Well, I've got to go through a series of stuff to get here and to get on live. So, uh, I was running around like a little bit crazy. Hey, that's right. Piggy seen it. Says, uh, we're all a little bit different. Hey, and Tony and Joni, I'm on the I'm on going to be on the replay crew. Um, like I was saying, so let's get back to that. So we had a interesting night. Um, had a late night, and then this morning got up and uh, we were getting ready to go to church, and. Got a phone call from our um, youngest, and they had locked themselves or had a vehicle locked at a store, and there was keys nowhere to be found. That was like last night. So that was why we were up late trying to figure out what we're going to do there um, and stuff like that. So we were trying to be helpful, but we were 30 miles away. Well, this morning as we're getting up, getting ready for church, got another phone call, wanting to know if we could come and take them to the store now that it was open because they were there right when it closed. Walked out the door, they locked the doors, and they couldn't go back in to look for the keys. So we had to drive the 30 miles in, take them to that store for them to find the keys sitting on the shelf right by what they were purchasing. Um, so that they had a vehicle again. Uh, so that pretty much, by the time we got done with all of that, after that phone call, um, yeah, there was no church. Hey, Troy Sutton, what's going on? So I missed Creekside Maples this morning. I missed my regular church this morning. Um, and then the rest of the day, 
Um, I, my mother actually wanted us to come over um, and, oh, yep, and Nana is helping me out with the story. She says, oh, I missed it. She says, where did it go? Way up there. Rooster super sick with the flu. Yeah, he is super sick. Um, so that's why they were making a late night run to the store to try to pick up some, you know, upset stomach, nausea, diarrhea. Yeah. What's that jingle go? The pink stuff in a the bottle. They went to go get some of that. <laughs> but, um, that's right. I think God will forgive me. I do appreciate. Yep. I hope he does. Troy, every, Troy's asking for everyone to pray for his Uncle Bill. I will definitely put you down on the list, Troy. Um, in fact, let me grab my little notepad here so I can write that down. Okay, I got it down. So that's a little bit of the story. And then at lunchtime, I went to my mother's and we ate dinner. And then we spent the afternoon visiting with my mother and my middle son and his wife came over. And we've had an absolute enjoyable afternoon. And then we went to the house and pulled in the driveway, pulled down by the house and looked up and there is a big black hooved with a rooter snout that come out to visit my truck as I pull in the driveway. And then pretty soon, hey, Kelly and Renee, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, they come out to visit me and Nana as we pulled up along with six other, as I lovingly call them, domestic terrorists. Oh, I am so sorry, Jamie. So please put down Jamie also, as she lost her mother. Hey, there's Lauren and Joel making it home. Welcome in. Welcome in. There's Red Mexican. What's going on? Welcome in. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> so, in other words, I had to like grab a feed bucket and they all come running because they know who their shepherd is. Um, and I walk in the pen. Um, and we button them back up and we made sure that the pin was back secure again and that made me a little bit late getting here so that is a little bit of how my day has went um god made sure that my birthday was interesting as he always does god rewards us in so many different ways that you know and so many things at play that we have no understanding of. There's Kelly at Rebel at Heart. Hello, Kelly, and welcome in. Um, you know, he blesses us beyond measure. And, and in so many ways that we don't even understand. So many things happen in our life that we have a hard time understanding how is this working for my good lord i mean those those unanswered prayers those those little things that happen um that you know they're not on our plan as we know god's plan is not our plan and no one here knows god's plan or knows how it's going to happen you know i think about and i titled this today Rebecca, 
I will put that down to pray for your sister Judy. Yeah, I mean, I love this. <laughs> so Roman Hilly, two beef patty, two all beef patty, special sauce. No, wait, that's the wrong jingle. I love that. But, you know, let's go along that. Life is not made where um, we're not like the fast food joint. You can't order it your way. I always loved that saying of, of, you know, make a plan and allow God to laugh. Because he'll he'll get a laugh out of your plans. Because if your plans aren't his plans, <laughs> you know. But isn't it odd in today's world that if we're a Christian, right? If we are if we are children of faith, if we express that faith to others, that we're just different. You know, if we're not the one that goes and hangs out at the bonfire, you know, what's what's the old the old George Jones song or uh you know, white lightning or um you know, if we're not if we're not the ones that are all about drinking that free bubble up, you know, um if we're not into the cor the correct the the PC movement of of the time were different, right? You know, I love that Kelly says you even at the fast food places you can't have it your way anymore. That's right. I mean, you can't have it your way. You know, we all seem to not understand that. It's not our plan to make life the way it is. That, yes, we have free will, right? And that each of us can choose a path. But I can tell you what happens. It's a lot like as a livestock person, right? And I know Brother Johnny, several of the others in here, the livestock people, can agree with me in this. We don't move animals by force. We just make sure that the pathway that they want to go has so much obstruction that eventually they say, mm, it's easier to go that way. Now, so many of us have a hard time understanding like that crazy cow or that hard-headed pig that if we just took the easy way that God has laid out for us, our life would be so much better. Brother Tony Walsh, welcome in at R&W Farmstead. Good to see you. You know, and I'm not saying that always the easy path is the correct path. But I am saying when we do things according to God's will and God's plan, that life unfolds for others. And I am I am paying attention to a little bit of this conversation that's going on. Hey, Barb, but Ben's over acres, if I didn't say hi. Um, that's going on in the chat here. You know, Brother Johnny is talking about how, you know, sharing God's word and God's love and God's plan with others is sometimes seen as judgmental, as sometimes seen as not loving to others. And that makes us seem different to others in this world, right? That if we're not the one that wants to sit down, and party it up with others, then we're seen as a prude. 
If we're not the one who's willing to go watch this show or that show that doesn't fit to our morals or our understanding of what God has told us, we're different. Now, is different being a bad thing? I mean, several of you to me look at me and say, hey, that guy's different. That guy make that guy jokes about funny stuff and he 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 laughs at things he shouldn't maybe laugh at, or or you know, maybe he you know he he could look a lot healthier. Maybe he should go a different way about how he conducts himself on the internet. Or maybe he needs to not have a beard when it's 85 degrees outside. You know, it makes each one of us different, right? You know, God knit each and every one of us in our mother's womb. He built us specifically for a purpose in this sin-fallen world. Now, for several of us, that is a struggle. Hi, my name's Dale. And I've struggled with my own existence. I struggle with myself on, am I worthy enough? I struggle with myself on if I say or do the right thing. I judge myself on how others express how they feel about me. Did God create you that way? I love this right here. I got to stop and highlight this. Linda Peterson, exactly. We're all created in God's image. So if we're all created in God's image, right? Do you look at God and judge him? Do you look at God as he's different in a negative way? Or do we look at God as being different as something in beauty? I don't know about you, but you know, if you see this field of flowers, right? And every flower is yellow, just like my banner here. And all of a sudden in that sea of yellow flowers, there's one that may be purple or one that may be red. Do we look at that and say, well, that's a horrible thing. That flower is different. I don't, I don't, I don't know about you. I'm not a big flower guy, but. To me, God made it different. Why? So it stands out to others. AJ, AJ, welcome in. Our cabin in the woods. I bet Tony's close by. <clears throat> I love Tony here from Creekside. At the end of the day, I want to lay my head on a pillow and know God is pleased with me. I may have not pleased everyone else. As long as I've pleased God. Amen, brother. Speak it. There's Scotty. <laughs> I love Scotty's little. <laughs> Amen, brother. You know, <coughs> several of us in our former life, before we have been re reborn again in Christ may have been one that just fit into the norm, right? So, you know, as I'm contemplating all of this this week and even today, you know, I'm going to tell you, thank you, Amanda Dahl. I appreciate that. She said we did good with the garden. 
We got a lot of work to go. I appreciate that. Um, you know, as I com as I contemplated this this week and over the last few days, I don't know about anyone else here, but I'm gonna okay, like I said, I speak in for Dale here, right? I'm speaking for me. And I've already admitted, you know, I struggle with a lot of things along that line. Um, I think they have an actual term for that, and it, you know, that 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 seeking your self worth from others. You know, certain certain studies will call that a, a codependent life, right? Um, I don't. I, I'm not put here to put a label on things like that, but you know, as I study that and as I think about that. Yeah, your esteem, exactly. How much esteem? Do you have good self-esteem? Do you have bad? You know, things along that line. And for me, for so long, I wanted to be not different. I want to fit in, right? That's like a human nature thing from birth. As you grow up as a small little child, what are you told to do? Well, why don't you act like your brother? Why don't you act like your sister? See how everyone else is exactly in line? Why don't you act like everybody else? Did God create you that way? Did God create each and every one of us to be exactly the same? No. Because remember what we have studied in the past. We've talked about. Each one of us are given a certain gift. Some are given the gift to share with others. Scripture and the Lord. Some of us are given the gift of giving to others. Of serving others. Each and every one of us are given a specific gift and we're created distinctly different in this world. I love that. Val says, why are you always getting into fights at school? <laughs> yeah. So when we start thinking about, okay, we're all different right? But we all work together as one unit. We're all part of God's family. We're all children of God. I look at my own children, three completely distinctive, different individuals. But when you look at the three, there's not a doubt in your mind that that one is related to that one, is related to that one. And all three of them have their mother or their father or their grandfather or their grandmother stamped on them in some way, shape, or form. You know, when we start looking at it in that term, are we different? To be different? Or are we different so each one of us play an important part in God's plan? Let's look what Scripture says a little bit here. So the first verse that I want to talk about today comes from 1 John 4.4. 4. I use the NIV. Use your translation. You, dear children, are from God. And have overcome them. Because the one in you. Who is in you. Is greater. Than the one that is in this world. So by that right. If we look at just this verse alone. I'm not trying to take it out of context. Or nothing like that. But let's glean. What this verse is telling me says, you, 
are from God. You've already overcome your sins. The day that you give your life to him. Because the one that is in you and I is greater than anything else in this world. Greater than the one in this world. So God designed you to be exactly who you are. He designed you to fit out in the crowd, to stand out. He designed you to not be the wallflower. Your exact gift that he gave you was designed by him to fit in this plan to further grow his kingdom, to play an integral part In this world. Your story of your past. Your past that you. May be ashamed of. Means nothing. The day that you accept Christ. And he washes you clean. It's just a story. The days of fitting in with others to be part of the crowd are over. Why? Because I'm already accepted into the club. I already know my self-worth in this world. Because I don't care about this world. Wait a minute, Dale just said we don't care about this world. That can't be right. You're right. I don't care about this world. I don't care about what the Kardashians are wearing today. I don't care about what car you drive. I don't care about who wins the election, who doesn't win the election. I don't care about who won the football game. Why? Because I'm not concerned about this world. MT Homestead, welcome in, Ma and Paul. Mike and Terry, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Exactly. Creekside, love it. world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. That's right. We're like travelers in a bus station or on in an airport. I know a bus isn't like common anymore, but an airport is very common. We're just travelers. We're only here for a short amount of time until we get to our final destination. I don't know about you, but it's like when you've been out. So I used to travel a lot for work. That water didn't go down very well. <clears throat> I used to travel a lot. And as much, and don't get me wrong, I love to travel. Love to travel. Miss Nana will tell you the same thing. Lisa will tell you the same thing. I love travel. But eventually, we all want to do what? We want to go home. We want to go to where we feel safe and comfortable. And I love that worship him. I love the fact that Tony shared that with us. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. Each one of us, like that traveler in that airport, right? Is completely different. Are you a people watcher like me? I'm a people watcher. Yeah, my wife says, sometimes, honey, you're going to creep people out. Like, Why? Well, you're just watching people. Yeah, that's like the best entertainment ever. 
Watch people. Watch them interact with others. Watch them interact with their own family. Watch what kind of odd stuff they put on, what they wear, what they do. Okay? If you ever just get quiet for a moment and watch the world around you, you'll understand how busy this world is and how many distractions in this world that the devil, he who is in this world, puts into place to draw your attention away from the only true thing in this world, and that's God. You ever think maybe that's what God is sitting there doing? He's up above. He already has everything planned out, right? He already knows how this world's wor working, and he's just sitting up there. We're all kind of like a TV reality show to him, just watching, and he's just laughing, and he's giggling, and he's crying with us also as we have losses in our life, as we fail in life. Because he's crying to be empathetic. But he also knows that you are destined for a lot greater things in this life. Hey, thank you for joining our membership, Terry. I appreciate that. <clears throat> you know... I know I venture a little bit off the course there by talking about that. But, you know, the difference in each one of us is so distinct that we stick out intentionally by design. You know, as we travel through this life, like I said, it's so common to fit into the, the, the crowd, right? Well, you know, if you're cool, I remember... You know, as we were younger, now I'm getting older, right? And I know I'm not as old as some of you guys. Um, and I know I'm way older than others in here. But, you know, we start looking, we start trying to fit in, right? Well, you know, we're going to have a get together. We're going to, you know, we're going to have us some, some wine. We're going to have us a drink or something like that, you know. And by golly, you know, you better try it. You better have some. You're going to stick out. You're going to be different if you don't have a drink with everybody. You're going to be different if you don't go to this movie with everyone. And, you know, the whole being different, we all look at it as being, hey, Lori, thanks for being here. You're not late. This is when God intended you to show up. I appreciate you. You know, we look at things like that, and I'm reminded of verse like this. 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Now, I'm not much of a drinker. <laughs> Put some good food in front of me, by golly. I may knock you down to make it to it. No, I wouldn't. But I love to eat, right? And, you know, there was a time in my life that I might have a drink, you know, but that verse calls us to do everything for the glory of God. Well, we're done. We're not going to listen to Dale anymore. I can see the numbers are already going to start going down here. Dale's talking about how we can't have fun. We can't do things like that. That's wrong. Yada, yada. That kind of stuff. I'm not saying that. But I am saying, are you doing it for the glory of God?
Do you spend more time worrying about trying to forget about your life and making yourself feel a way that's not normal? Is that more of an emphasis than being about this world, living in the moment? Do you worry more about how extravagant or how much food you're eating or the expensiveness of the food? Or are you more intent on who provided you that food? Right? I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to call you out on something. That's right, Biggie. Jesus said, all things in moderation. And I know Scotty said, we can have fun to a limit. You know, one reason why this devotional went this way this week was there's always a former time in our younger lives that that's what it's about. It's about the party, not about the reason why we're celebrating. It's all about the party. And when we allow things like that to take over our lives, that we literally cannot function without the party, then we know the evil one is one. The Lord, our God, wants you to be happy. He wants you to celebrate victories. But he also wants you to know where those victories come from. Be bold. Be different. Just because that's what the crowd does. Doesn't mean... That's what you have to do. Just because the crowd wants to skip Sunday to go fishing. Just because the crowd wants you to take part in this or that sin doesn't mean that you have to. As I've grow, grown older in my life, I figured out that I like be different. And just because that is your past or your current situation doesn't mean God doesn't love you doesn't mean that you still cannot do the Lord's work. Because, brothers and sisters, spend some time in your Bible, and you'll find that the God of heaven and earth, my Lord and Savior, uses everyone, from the adulteress to the drunkard, to the tax collector and everyone in between. Your past allows you to be different in how you look upon life. The past is the past. 
And that's where it stays. Best saying ever. Those who learn from the past don't repeat the consequences. Those who don't spend forever <coughs> repeating their failures. So as we look towards this week, I ask you to be bold. Be different. Reach out to someone. Show them your way. Show them the gift that God has given you. I love this. Always told I'm preaching on deaf ears and to go away. No. God's persistent. And anyone who has ever struggled for years can tell you that God consistently worked on them. Brothers and sisters, I love you guys. You've blessed me amazingly today with all your birthday wishes. I feel so full of love. And I thank you for planting that joy in me. If it wasn't for the fact that you all would listen to me, I would still be different enough to share this with others. Rebecca, I, I pray for you. In fact, let's go to the Lord of Prayer right now. God, we love you. We praise you for making each one of us different. You know every hair on our head, Lord. You knew us when we were knit in our mother's womb. God, we praise you for making each one of us special and different and instilling great gifts upon us to help others. Lord, we praise you for the victories that you show us, Lord. Lord, we praise you for working in our lives that we do not know of. God, I ask if it's in your will, Show my sister Rebecca her victories, her joy. Reinstill that joy back into her life, Lord God. God, be with my brother Troy, his Uncle Bill. Lord, just heal him and put your arms around him. Lord, be with Rebecca's sister Judy. Lord, if it's in your will, just heal her from this, Lord. God, put your loving comfort and arms around Jamie and others who have lost their loved ones from this world. God, I just... Fill them with the love and understanding, God. And fill them with hope again. 
Lord, we all share loss together. When one of us suffers, we all suffer. And God, I just ask that you put your arms around our community. Lord, be with our brother Charles as he struggles with this disease. Lord, please take cancer from this world. Lord, please just strike it away. Heal everyone suffering from the disease as a miracle. So that we can all talk about how our God performed a miracle. Lord, I pray that you use me to bring others to you. God, I pray that anyone watching this now or in the future or hears my voice during this and does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that you show him through me to them. Lord, that the voice and the words will speak to them. And that they pray with me now. Jesus, I love you. I give my life to you. To use as you see fit. I will serve you all my days here. And I will proclaim your name to everyone I meet. God, we praise and we love you for this community and for putting each one of these different unique individuals into our lives to share with one another. Amen. Guys, not that I'm ending that quick, but when I feel led, I'm going to I'm going to pray. Hey, there's Farm Girl. Welcome in, Farm Girl. Hey, if I missed anyone else in the chat, don't charge it to my heart. No, I love you. And I'm so happy you're here. So as we part ways, remember you're different. God made you that way. Share your difference with others. Till next time, farm on. Keep strong. I love you. So does God. Bye.